Grade 8 math number 1.1c, find a square root or find a cube root. A square root is a number that is multiplied to itself which makes a product. A square root of 25 would be 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. It would be written inside of a symbol like this, 25, and it would equal 5. See? It's a number that's multiplied to itself and it equals that number. The square root of 25 is 5. See? A principal square root is a non-negative square root of a number. So because this is a positive, that would be a principal square root. A perfect square is the square of a whole number. This is a whole number, so that's also a perfect square. A cube root is a number that is multiplied to itself three times and it makes a product. So the cube root it would be written like this with the little 3. The cube root of 125 would be 5 because 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125. See? It's the 5 multiplied to itself 3 times. We call the number inside this radical symbol. That's what this is. It's a radical symbol. We call this the radicand. A perfect cube is the cube of a whole number like 125. See? If this were a decimal or a fraction and it wasn't a whole number it wouldn't be a perfect cube okay so let's talk about square roots the square root of a positive number n would be x if x squared equaled that number what that means is the square root of a positive number like 16 would be 4 if 4 to the second power 4 squared equaled 16 4 times 4 equals 16 Look at it this way. If we had a box and it was going down 4 this way and 4 this way, 4 times 4 is 16. See how it makes the square? There's 4 on this side, 4 on this side, and it makes the 16. Square roots as plus or minus 1 fourth to show both positive and negative 1 fourth. We write the little plus on top of the minus sign like that. And this symbol is called a radical symbol. It means the positive or principal square root. It's the non-negative square root of a number. See? It's positive. A number that is a perfect square has square roots that are negative or positive whole counting numbers. They're square roots that are integers. The number 36 is a perfect square because its square roots are 6 and negative 6. We multiply negative 6 times negative 6, we're going to get a positive 36. And we multiply a positive 6 by a positive 6, we get a po positive 36. See? So if we have x squared equals 144, we solve for x by taking the square root of both sides. It's going to be a positive or negative. We apply the definition of a square root. It's a number times itself is going to equal 144. And we think what number squared equals 144? Well, 12 times 12 equals 144. And negative 12 times negative 12 would equal a positive 144. So it would be a plus or minus 12. And if we have a fraction like x squared is equal to 16 over 169, we do the same thing. We solve for x by taking the square root of both sides. It's a positive or negative, And we apply the definition of a square root. What number times itself is going to equal 16 over 169? And we get 4 over 13, 4 thirteenths. We can see 4 times 4 would be 16, and we can figure out that 13 times 13 would be the 169, so it would be 4 thirteenths, and it would be a positive or negative 4 thirteenths, because two negatives can make a positive, so either one can make that positive 16 one sixty-ninths. See? Now, remember what I did here, that it was a 4 and a 4, see, like 4 times 4 is 16? Well, that's like a cube root. If we have a cube, we've got 3 and 3 and 3. So there's three of them, and if we counted up all these cubes inside of here, there would be 27 little squares that would make this cube of, see, of 3, 3, 3, see? So the cube root of a positive number b is x if x cubed equals b. There's one cube root for every positive number. So this one doesn't have the negative and positive like this one does. The cube root of 27 is 3 because 3 to the third power, 3 cubed, equals 27. 3 times 3 is 9. 
9 times 3 is 27, so 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And the cube root of 1 27th is 1 third, because 1 third to the third power, 1 third cubed, is 1 27th. The radical symbol with a tiny 3 means cubed root, see? And a number that has a perfect cube has a cube root that is a positive or negative counting number, an integer. The number 64 is a perfect cube because its cube root is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. It's perfect. So if we had to find the cube of 729, we would solve for x by taking the cube root of both sides. We would apply the definition of a cube root. It's a number that multiplied to itself three times would equal that number. And we think, what numbers cubed equals 729? So we can do trial and error. And 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. Well, that's not 729. We try to find a number that when we multiply it to itself three times, it equals 729. And 9 fits. So x is equal to 9. The cube root of 729 equals 9. That's how you would read this. The cube root of 729 is 9. We can do it with fractions, too. If x cubed equals 27 over 125, we solve for x by taking the cube root of both sides. See? We apply the definition of a cube root. Some number that's multiplied to itself three times is going to equal 27 over 125. Well, we know that 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, because 3 times 3 is 9 and then times 3 is 27. So we know that the numerator is going to be a 3. And what number multiplied to itself three times makes a 125? Well, a 5 does. So we end up with 3 fifths. That's the number that, when cubed, makes 27 over 125. So this would be read as the cube root of 27 1 25ths equals 3 fifths. See? So don't be scared to do trial and error, okay? If you have a number like this, try doing 6 times 6 is 36, and then multiply 36 times 6, okay? And see if it's big enough. And if it's not, if it's way off, this is only 216, you know you have to jump way higher. Try 8 or 9 and see if that would work, okay? All right, so that's how you find a cube root and a square root. Now you know what a radic radical symbol is. You know how to write the symbol with the little 3 for cube root. You know what a square root is. You even know that the number inside the radical symbol is called a radicon. Okay? All right, we're going to talk about estimating irrational numbers in our next video. It's video number 1.1D. And we'll talk about what irrational numbers are and how to estimate them. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button. And don't forget that you can support me on Patreon.com. See you next video. Bye.